Today, I'll be touching on the body positivity movement, something that used to be known as fat acceptance. The idea that all bodies, no matter how huge, are simply beautiful. Actually, that's not true. It only applies to women's bodies. According to the fat acceptance movement, if you're a man and you're overweight, you're still just a tubby bastard. Now, the issue I have with the body positivity movement is it doesn't promote any type of healthy living. Being morbidly obese isn't good for you. The clue's in the name. This is Canadian plus-size influencer Jalyn Cheney. And a video of hers went viral a few months ago when she said that airlines should be forced to give extra seating to plus-size people. Basically, if they're too big to fit into one airline seat, the airline should have to provide for free an extra one or even two seats. And these seats would then be subsidised by all the other passengers on the plane. And as this video goes on, we'll see a lot of this from Jalen. That people who are, to be blunt, huge, usually who've inflicted that condition upon themselves, while the rest of us should bend over backwards to accommodate them and no blame should be aimed at their pudgy feet. By her logic, if Tubbs Lardy wants to go and gorge himself for a week in Benidorm, everyone else on the plane should have to pay for it. And she was back in the news a few weeks ago, this time taking aim at the leisure industry, saying that hotels should be more accommodating to plus size people. Through better staff training, and maybe there's some truth in that, but also that hotels should have to widen their corridors. Now, aside from that would cost the leisure industry billions of pounds, it makes perfect sense that if the hotel corridors were wider, then the rooms would have to be smaller. Not only that, but most hotels I've stayed in, the corridors are wide enough to drive a small family car down them. If your issue is you can't fit into a space that can accommodate a Renault Clio, who really is the problem? She also said that hotel lifts or elevators, if you're watching in the new world, should be made bigger. But I'm sorry, if you can't fit into a space designed to accommodate four people and their luggage, you're precisely the type of person who should be using the stairs much more often. And now Jalen's back again, this time offering advice to restaurants on how to better take care of plus size people. Restaurants, the one place that the morbidly obese should not feel comfortable, because I know there are medical conditions that make some people gain weight quicker than others. But the long and the short of it is, if you want to put on masses of weight, you need to put more fuel into your mouth than your body actually needs. And I feel sorry for restaurant owners, particularly, say the owner of an all-you-can-eat buffet, a Chinese all-you-can-eat buffet. These are extremely popular in the UK and I believe the USA. Now, if a coach party of people the size of Jalen turned up, although using her logic, there'd probably only be three or four people on the coach, that restaurant owner is going to think, because he's Chinese, oh, fluck in hell, I'm not making any money tonight. I'm going to have to tell the waitresses they're all going back on the game. I am not suggesting that all waitresses at Chinese restaurants are also part-time prostitutes. I am saying I've been to some Chinese restaurants where if I'd asked the manager, could I see the other menu, he wouldn't have been offering me food. Anyway, our large friend has made a 10 point video on the ways that restaurants can be more accommodating. So we'll watch that and then I'll pick her 10 points apart. If you've ever been uncomfortable in a restaurant because of your size, I know the struggle. And that's why I'm making today's video. Today's video is all about how restaurants can be more size inclusive and accessible for people of all sizes and abilities. With this video, I hope to educate some restaurant owners so that they can make their restaurants more size inclusive and accessible. Here are my 10 solutions for how restaurants can create a more inclusive environment. Solution number one, comfortable seating. Restaurants should provide spacious and sturdy chairs without armrests so that people of all sizes can dine comfortably. Solution number two, flexible table arrangements. Offer adjustable table configurations with ample space in between so people in larger bodies can navigate everything comfortably. Solution number three, accessible restrooms. Ensure restrooms are spacious and can comfortably accommodate plus size individuals and those with disabilities. Solution number four, reservation flexibility. Allow guests to request seating preferences during the reservation process. This will allow people to choose seating that suits their needs. Solution number five, provide key information on your website. 
Provide key information like table configuration, seat dimensions, chair weight capacities, and more on your website where it's easily accessible. Solution number six, ensure that your tables are not secured to the ground. Make sure they can be moved to make room for individuals who might need more space. Solution number seven, offer more room in booth seating. Make sure that there's plenty of space to move around between the table and booth seat. This will ensure that people of various body sizes can sit there and be comfortable. Solution number eight, staff training. Train staff on what type of accommodations can help plus size individuals have a better experience. Solution number nine, outdoor dining. If you've got an outdoor dining area, make sure you have some chairs without armrests and opt for chairs that do not have metal grating. This is a small change that can create a more open and inclusive atmosphere. And last but not least, solution 10, showcase photos. Consider showcasing photos of your typical seating and table setups on your website. It helps people plan ahead and sets the stage for a comfortable and welcoming dining experience. And these are just some of the ways that restaurants can become more size friendly and inclusive. Check out my blog at the top of my profile for more. Before I get going, at the very start of her video, she says that she's there to educate restaurant owners. How bloody condescending is that? But point one is comfortable seating without armrests. As we will see, it's all about Jalen being comfortable and sod everyone else because what about the elderly or people with joint problems or disabilities who use the armrest to get in and out of the chair? And what about people who just want to rest their arms and know that putting your elbows on the table whilst eating is extremely bad manners? I will say, if you need a chair the size of a three-seater sofa to take the weight of your ass, then you are the problem. Point two flexible table arrangements. Now, most restaurants will move tables if they're asked to, but of course, the way that restaurants are laid out is in a manner that allows them to seat the maximum amount of customers at any given time, therefore making the maximum amount of money. Moving tables around is not only hassle for the staff, it eats into the profits, whilst they watch Jalen eat into everything. Point three, accessible restrooms. Now, if you're the sort of person who cannot fit into a standard bog cubicle, who really is the issue? And disabled restrooms? I think by law, most restaurants are required to have disabled facilities, but they are there for the disabled. Shoveling food down your gullet with gay abandon is not a disability. It's plain fucking gluttony. For reservation flexibility, we'll come back to this near the end of the video. Point five provide key information on your website, such as seating dimensions and chair weight capacity. Now, I'm a larger chap. I have been much more overweight than this, yet I have never worried about going out for a meal about the breaking strain of the furniture. The chairs here are not the problem. Point six, ensure your tables are not secured to the ground. Does she mean like in McDonald's? Because I'll put good money on it that she's never driven past one of those restaurants in her life. And again, it's going to be to do with the space of the restaurant. And I'm also guessing here, health and safety. If you've got a restaurant with a lot of young children, if they can pull the table and it would topple over, either it could fall onto them, injuring them, or they could do something like spill hot soup onto them and scold themselves. But once again here, we see Jalen taking a total lack of responsibility. Make the changes so that she doesn't have to. Point seven, more room in booth seating. Once again, if you can't fit into a standard seating booth, who really is the problem? I'm five foot 11 and 15 stone, and I can fit in those with loads of room. And again, it's demanding that the restaurant gets rid of its capacity to serve as many customers as possible. Have less space, ergo less trade. I'm also guessing that Jalen will be demanding a special space for her and her friends' fat chariots. By that I mean those mobility scooters that the morbidly obese ride around on. Point eight, staff training. Here I have some sympathy, but I'll also say most waitresses and waiters, they're usually on minimum wage. It's a high paced, high stress job. They're doing their absolute best, so why should they be forced to do extra training to take care of people who clearly can't take care of themselves? Point nine is outdoor seating, again with a demand for chairs with no armrests. And point ten, having photos on the website to allow people to plan their visit. Now, I see no harm in that, but um, I'm about to say some cold, hard truths. Starting with the outdoor seating, 
I don't think restaurant owners want people like Jalen sat outside their establishments. Airlines, hotels, restaurants are all businesses, and all businesses are in the business of making money. If there are people struggling with entirely self-inflicted conditions, the businesses are not to blame. If I ran a restaurant, I wouldn't have to spend my hard-earned profits on special chairs for people who can't sit on normal furniture. Nor would I want said people breaking my normal furniture. Because not only would I have to replace the chairs, I'd leave myself open for them to sue me. I wouldn't want to have to call the fire brigade because someone who's no stranger to a fish supper has got wedged in a toilet cubicle. Or have to pay to have the roof removed so they can be lifted out with a fucking crane. And here is another hard truth for the body positivity movement. When it comes to outdoor dining, the restaurant owners don't want you there. They don't want massively overweight people in their special chairs blocking the entrance and exit. They don't want you in the window either because as we all know, on a Saturday night, if you go past a restaurant, all you can see is the beautiful people. The influencers who actually have a positive following who give off the idea that this restaurant is a great place for fashionable people to go. And as I said at the start of this video, the body positivity movement isn't good for anyone. Being massively overweight will drastically shorten your life. Jalen is making ridiculous demands to suit her ridiculous lifestyle. And for the supporters of the body positivity movement, most of whom are female, there's a very easy way to undermine most of their arguments. If you have someone who isn't massively overweight, I guarantee if they follow this ethos, they will say that Lizzo is beautiful. Say to that woman, you look just like Lizzo and see how quickly she changes her mind. As ever, thanks for watching. I'll be gonna fucking today you got that wrong, you dozy fuck. On the body positivity movement, what used to be called fat, fat acceptance, don't say out Canadian else. info, and there's a big puddle. Fuck, which one am I on? Okay, moving on to, moving on, fuck's sake. Oh, that's nice.